Elongated on two sides, shorter on the top, with a slightly rounded over point, kind of like a slice of pizza or a wedge of cheese. The 351 is the pick we all know, whether we know it by that name or not. The 351 began life in 1920 in New York City, when Luigi D'Andrea bought a sheet of surplus celluloid from a cosmetics company, Sidewalk Sale, in Little Italy. He went home and with a mallet and dye, tapped out a handful of heart-shaped wafers which he thought could be used as decorations for women's compacts. But his son Anthony thought they looked more like the mandolin picks played by their cousin Primo. So with Anthony as translator, Luigi sold a box of them for $10 to the G. Shermer Music Company in Midtown, and the modern celluloid guitar pick industry was born. Celluloid was the first synthetic plastic. Its supreme moldability meant that you could fashion it into just about any shape, and you could also dye it with any color of the rainbow, both opaque and translucent, an ability that made it perfect for use in early movie film. But it was celluloid's similarity to turtle shell that made it an obvious choice for instrument picks. The shell of the hawksbill sea turtle was long revered as an ideal guitar pick material, but it was expensive to produce in quantity. But when cured and polished, celluloid attained a smooth, semi-matte surface similar to polished shell. It also had enough rigidity to drive a string forcefully while still remaining flexible enough to return to its original shape if you bent it. One drawback of celluloid is that it's highly flammable. Its main ingredient is nitrocellulose, which sounds like something harmless that a cow would be able to digest, but was actually once called gun cotton for its explosive properties. So when danger threatens, don't ignite a pile of cinema classics. Instead, reach for a celluloid guitar pick and detonate the forces of evil. By the 1930s, celluloid had enabled a more metaphorical explosion in guitar pick creativity, and presumably also grateful sea turtle populations. And the D'Andrea Company was driving it, with a catalog featuring dozens of designs that a modern player would still recognize. The large triangular model 346 and the smaller teardrop 358 are both still popular, but it was the isosceles shaped model 351 designed for early guitar star Nick Lucas that proved revolutionary. As the guitar wrested the lead playing spotlight from the mandolin and the banjo, Lucas branded D'Andrea pick displays landed on music store counters everywhere, defining the 351 shape as the standard for plectrum guitar. In 1955, D'Andrea inked a deal to produce Fender branded model 351 picks, and the 351's legacy was sealed. Fender's place in electric guitar history is of course closely tied to the ascendancy of rock and roll itself and it made the pick so ubiquitous that even if you're not familiar with D'Andrea, Nick Lucas, or the 351 model number, its shape is still probably what you imagine when you think of what a guitar pick looks like. In Will Hoover's wonderful history of guitar picks called Picks, he photographed the original die that created the most famous shape in guitar picks. We can all marvel at how much guitar power was unleashed by the simple celluloid cutting tool. Walk into a music store looking for guitar picks, they're probably gonna show you something that looks like this. This is a vintage D'Andrea model 351 Nick Lucas signature guitar pick. And right away you will note the very familiar 351 contours, the elongated sides, a little bit flatter on the top, and the rounded over point. This one, of course, as we would expect, made classically of celluloid. This is a medium, a little bit flappier than today's mediums. This would probably be more like a thin by today's standards. This particular pick hails from the 50s, perhaps even the 40s. I will leave it to pick aficionados and collectors to figure that one out. But nevertheless, it is old. <laughs> and the fact that we can recognize this shape is indeed a testament to the influence and popularity of the D'Andrea Model 351 design. And of course, the the next sort of watershed moment in the 351's history was the deal with Fender that made this pick ubiquitous for even later generations. And if we compare, this is a modern Fender 351, and you can see they are indeed a very similar shape. The vintage 351 is actually a little bit smaller, just a tiny bit, and a little bit flatter on the top. The Fender 351 is a little bit rounder. Now I feel like I've seen D'Andrea 351s 
that did in fact have this slightly rounded over top. So it may be that D'Andrea in fact had um, different, slightly different models of 351 or perhaps other model numbers that were very similar to the 351. Vintage pick catalogs uh, showcasing the D'Andrea line were impressive in the sheer variety of shapes that the company came up with. And it was, I guess, as part of the relationship with Nick Lucas, who was a popular, who was really a guitar star at the time, a singing and playing star, that this particular pick design took off the way that, how cool is that? One of the first 351, uh, one of the first innovations, let's say, post Fender, that utilized the 351 shape were these picks, the Herco nylons. The shape here is a little bit more like the vintage 351. It's a little bit flatter on the top and very similar in size, maybe just a tiny bit bigger, but not much, really very similar. Same point geometry, same flat top, rounded corners, isosceles, triangle shape for those of you who are ace at eighth grade mathematics. The Herco nylons are of course made of nylon. It's a softer material, a little bit more flexible and cheaper to manufacture, easier to manufacture. And also the grip, the nylon pick, the Herco nylon pick was famous also for the, the imprinted grip surface here that makes it easier to hold on to. And following on that innovation, Jim Dunlop came up with the nylon pick that I know growing up in the eighties playing uh, guitar, learning guitar in the mid eighties, it was this pick. These are the Dunlop nylons, but of course, the shape is one we recognize. It is, of course, very similar to the original D'Andrea 351 and identical, really functionally identical to the Fender iteration of the 351. 